but but if we can even go back a little further before we go into the gas and into the tell me how is nitric oxide produced because um, there's different um, ways and also what's the difference because you say gas you know there are some people here listening is it nitrous oxide is it the laughing gas that some people are uh, abusing and that's a drug of abuse so yeah. can you make the difference first how is it produced and what's the difference between nitric and nitrous oxide yeah it's a very good point and many people make that um, kind of connection and think nitric oxide is nitrous oxide so the only similarity is how they sound, right? Nitric oxide, <laughs> nitric oxide is, the name. <laughs> is NO, nitrous oxide is N2O. One's a dental anesthetic, primarily used in dental uh, medicine to kind of calm you. So it's, uh, it's an anesthetic. Nitric oxide is completely different. There's not, I mean, there's a role of nitric oxide in nociception mm -hmm. and, and pain, but it's not used as an Nothing. analgesic or an anesthetic. So that's completely different physical chemistry, nitrous oxide, nitric, nitric oxide. What we do is nitric oxide, nitric. NO. But yeah, it's a gas and it's now recognized that there are two pathways to produce nitric oxide. And we've got a slide here that shows you those two. And without going into the kind of in-depth of biochemistry, the first one we've discussed is called endothelial function. So this enzyme called nitric oxide synthase is found in our endothelial cells. And when it becomes activated, it can make nitric oxide. That was the first pathway to be discovered. So it's responsible for the second to second regulation of blood flow and oxygen and nutrient delivery. And that, unfortunately, the older we get, the less functional that enzyme becomes. And we call that endothelial dysfunction. Yes. The other pathway, which we discovered about 20 years ago, was through the diet. So some of the foods we eat, like, and this explains the mechanism of action of a, a plant-based diet, a Mediterranean mm -hmm. diet, the Japanese the benefits diet. benefits of the plant -based The cardiovascular diet. benefits of certain dietary patterns. So when we consume foods like green leafy vegetables, we're getting many nutrients, but the primary nutrient that we're interested in is inorganic nitrate. And then the body can, can metabolize that nitrate based on the bacteria in and on our body into nitric oxide. And now that pathway can compensate for this loss of endothelial function. Mm. So you get about 50% of your nitric oxide from both pathways. One can compensate for the other, but if you have endothelial dysfunction and you have a poor diet, you become globally nitric oxide deficient. And that's when people start the rapid onset and progression of chronic disease. And I think a good point, and part of what really surprised me in your book, and this is one of the things that we're big on, um, is you know the loss of nitric oxide as you age in a perfect world, but we right. live in a modern world. We live in a modern world Toxin. where toxins are a factor. Um, the, the location of where the vegetables are grown is a factor, yeah, yeah. the soil, the content. So I know that you did a, you, you actually tested this. You went through many different states, bought vegetables in many different states because there's, there's an actual dose um, that you can get from food that will be sufficient for nitric right. oxide production, right? But then you tested different states and the, the dose that you got was, I mean, a tiny amount, right. even eating a, a horrendous amount of vegetables. <laughs> Is that right. correct? Yeah, so the, the question was, and you know, as a scientist, I like to ask practical questions, right? How do we right. take a complex science and put it in a simple, practical way for that's, patients? That's what we're in the business of doing. <laughs> to implement. So the first question was, Okay, if we're getting a source of nitric oxide activity through foods and diet and vegetables, then can we change the guidelines? How much celery, broccoli, spinach would one need to eat right. to get sufficient of these nutrients to stimulate nitric oxide production or to generate nitric oxide? So we went to five cities. This was a paper we published in, I think, 2015 in collaboration with Texas A&M University. But just going around, we went to Chicago, New York, Raleigh, Dallas, and Los Angeles mm -hmm. and just sampled vegetables at the retail grocer we brought it back to the lab and we quantified the nitrate content of these vegetables. And we found that, you know, there's as much as a 50 to 100 fold difference in the nitrate of celery in Dallas versus New York. Wow. And broccoli. 50% difference. No, 50 times. No, 50, times. 50 times. Sorry. 50, times. 50, 50 times. X. 50 X. Like wow. Oh my yeah. gosh. And, so you, what and, you, and you'd also tested organic products. So and we tested conventionally versus organically grown. Right. And organically grown typically has about 10 times less right. oh. nitrate than Whoa. conventionally grown. So when you understand what this looks like, and this isn't a surprise, you know, the food that we grow and eat in America over the past 70 years, since the 1940s, there's an 80% reduction in trace minerals and nutrients. Yes. So it's just the pressures of feeding a growing population has been at the expense of nutrient density. Right. And so 
we're missing a lot of nutrients in the foods we eat. So that's why we have to supplement things like selenium, chromium, these trace minerals right. that we're trace missing, minerals. that we're missing from the foods that we're eating. The other, and, and now when you look at what's organic, you know, most consumers don't know what in the hell organic is, yeah. right? Yes. They just hear that Please it's tell good us. for you. Please so tell to, us. in the U.S. to get an organic label, obviously no herbicides or pesticide, which is very important. But there's also restrictions on standardized nitrogen fertilizer. So without standardizing nitrogen in the soil, you know, this whole field of agronomy, you need nitrogen in the form of nitrate to assimilate other nutrients. So if you're not adding a standardized amount of nitrogen to the soil, then these soils become nitrogen deficient. deficient. The vegetables yeah. or the foods yeah. that are grown in that soil become deficient. nitrate deficient. And that explains why these organically grown vegetables have less nitrate. Wow. So the point is, and I think this is shocking, this is the, the off factor for a lot of people. Yes. Because I'm trying to do the right things. I eat organic, yes, I correct. exercise. Yes, but you're not getting the nutrients you need. So what I tell people is buy local. Know your local growers mm. that are using kind of a standardized, they do soil sampling so they can replete their soil with missing nutrients or nitrogen. But you know, buy food that there's no herbicides or pesticides added. And that's when you get a nutrient dense food yeah, with not of the poisons and the, the toxins yeah. on the food. Uh, and supplement with wow. nitric oxide. So in other words, um, using a hyper, what's it called when they grow them in? Hydroponic. Hydroponic, hydroponic grown, because we went to a dinner and it didn't have any pesticides, herbicides. It was like the clean, you don't even have to clean the vegetable. Yeah, that's right. Because it's grown in a very sanitary environment. But they do use nitrogen supplementation on the hydroponic farms. Which well, you is, have to. Yeah, yeah, so that's interesting because we got one at our house um, and, and you know what? Yes, we, we, we try to eat organics as much as we can. Yep. It just opened my eyes. It's still worth it yeah. because at least you don't get the Absolutely. pesticide and the herbicide. Correct. But if you can find local, yeah. know the nitrogen. I have no idea about this, Nathan. You're blowing my mind. Um, if Live, you can do camera. Right? <laughs> we'll, we'll hit uh, that organic. subject next, by the way. The brain. How does it yes, affect the brain? We, we will. And, and so if I can recap this a little bit, I like to make things very simple for me. So the way we produce uh, nitric oxide is our cells, the endothelium, that does it. Yeah. Unfortunately, aging happens. Yes. Right. So that's going to go down. You know, we're fighting aging yeah. and we're doing a good damn job about it, <laughs> right. but you can't avoid it. The better your lifestyle, I suppose, the better that function will happen, yeah. but it will still decrease. So as that decreases, you need to find the right way of supplementing through your diet. Yeah. Unfortunately, because we're in our toxic world, it's becoming harder and harder. Correct. You still got to try it. Yeah. But then the next option is supplementing diet yeah. plus the right supplementation. Yeah. yeah, well, I think, I think um, you know, when you're talking about healing, um, you have to remove the yeah. assault, but you also have to mm -hmm. supplement. So it yeah, has to right. be a, a, a multifactorial approach. Yeah. In regards to nitric oxide and its potential benefits for cognitive function and brain health, is there any research on that? Yeah, it's a big one. Yeah, you know, it's a, it's a ever growing and expanding field. And, you know, the the incidence of neurodegenerative disease is on a, at an all-time high. Oh, right. I mean, Alzheimer's, uh, a lot of neurological disease. Autism. What we're finding is that neurological function, just like cardiac function, just like sexual function, is dependent upon adequate blood flow. Mm -hmm. So in all of these patients that have any type of neurocognitive disorders, whether it's Alzheimer's, vascular dementia, Parkinson's, bipolar, uh, ADHD, uh, post-traumatic stress disorder, through imaging, whether it's through spec scans or functional MRI or any type of non-invasive imaging, the common denominator in all these is loss of regulation of blood flow. So there's focal ischemia, which means there's, there's a lack of blood flow to specific regions of the brain. And again, when you don't get oxygen nutrients to certain regions of the brain, that part of the brain can't do its job. Mm -hmm. So whether it's the prefrontal cortex and, and hypoxia and ischemia and leading to mild cognitive disorders, vascular dementia and Alzheimer's, all of that, every single chronic disease, whether it's sexual function, cardiovascular disease, or brain health, is dependent upon adequate blood supply to the brain. That makes if sense. You, wow. If you don't get the good stuff in and take out the trash, what happens? You get built up of beta amyloid plaque, tau right. tangles, all the symptoms and signs of Alzheimer's. And the problem with every single Alzheimer's disease that has gone through the FDA has failed. Mm -hmm. And why is that? Because I'm sorry. Every single Alzheimer's drug that has gone through clinical yeah. trials has failed. Wow. And they're why is that? They're targeting the amyloid the, and mm -hmm. the tau tangles. That's a consequence of disease. That's not the cause of the disease. Right. So what we're doing now in our Alzheimer's drug studies is we're restoring blood flow to the brain, getting the good stuff in, taking the bad stuff out. You don't see the beta amyloid. You don't see wow. the vascular inflammation. And I think we can get to the root cause of 
neurodegenerative disease, cardiovascular disease, basically every major uh, chronic disease that we're faced That's with today. Incredible. It's all a blood flow problem. So we're trying to have babies right now. Yeah. Um, <laughs> would that, could my wife take that while she's pregnant? Nitroglycerin it sounds like it's very safe to take. Yeah, I mean, everything, it's dose dependent, right? Dose dictates poison. So what right. we try to do in every product technology we bring to market is recapitulate physiology. So many years ago, 20 years ago, we understood how much nitric oxide is being made in a 24 hour period in a normal, healthy, young individual with good endothelial function, good diet, and then we can quantify this kind of stoichiometrically, how much nitric oxide is being produced. And we do that in all our product technology. We basically give the body back what it's missing. And more importantly, we fix the reason you can't make nitric oxide. Mm -hmm. So I've been doing this, I don't have any kind of symptoms or, or disease, good blood pressure. I'll be 50 this year, but I have the biological age of a 36 year old. So as you mentioned, you can't, we can't do anything about our chronological, chronological age, we, but we can certainly sure affect about, our about biological age. And you know what, if I may, correct me if I'm wrong, so from your book I read that, and this is, I sort of want to bring this whole oxygen thing to yep. the brain or to the tissues, to the viewers. Mm -hmm. By the time you're 40 years old, in a perfect world, you've lost 50% capability of your nitric oxide production. Yes? That's right, by the, by the endothelium. Yeah. By the endothelium. And then by the time you get into your 60s, it's more like in the 70 range? No, yeah, on average. Like 85. Yeah, so these are, these are kind of general populations. So what right. we're measuring in these published trials, you're looking at kind of the average of your age-matched counterparts, right. right? But it doesn't necessarily, that has to be the case. You know, we, we predicted and we hypothesized that if we can prevent that age-related decline in nitric oxide production, simply by understanding the enzymology and the biochemistry of how to make nitric oxide and then restoring the function of those symptoms, then we can push that to the right. right? Oh, yeah, Shift yeah. that curve to the right. Yeah, so yeah. in terms of general kind of population-based studies, that seems to be the case. So, so know, we got 50% at 40, and what I want the viewers to imagine, imagine stripping 50% of the oxygen in the room that you're sitting in right now. How would that feel? I don't know if many of you have gone to high elevation. <laughs> I mean, just walking up a, a flight of stairs is exhausting. Yeah. And that's pretty much what our cells are feeling, that you know, we're, we're losing that oxygen and nutrient delivery to every single organ and tissue in your body. Yeah, and I think you make a very good point there and perhaps a point we overlook. So nitric oxide is not just a vasodilator. Correct. Yes. In a paper published in 2015, which I think is one of the most remarkable discoveries in the nitric oxide field in the past 30 years is that nitric oxide is required for oxygen uptake and oxygen delivery by red blood cells. Wow. So without nitric oxide being produced, you don't get oxygen delivered to individual cells. We, we experienced this over the past three years in COVID, yeah. right? What happens in COVID patients, they develop hypoxemia, their blood oxygen saturation drops, and these people would die from, yeah. from hypoxemia, not even really silent hypoxemia. Despite 100% oxygen supplementation. And mm -hmm. mechanical ventilation, yeah. and yet it wow. didn't help. So what we found in our nitric oxide drug study was simply by giving nitric oxide, you improve blood oxygen saturation from 78 to 96 in eight wow. minutes, just breathing room air. So that showed us really the vital importance of nitric oxide in not just Base improving elevation. blood flow, right. but also oxygenating the red blood cells so wow. you can actually deliver that oxygen to the tissues and cells of the body. I mean, that's a game changer in, in all types of, whether it's environmental induced in hy hypoxia, acute mountain mm -hmm. sickness, or kind of ischemia in global hypoxia. So if I can make a comment on this, since you're talking about pulmonary function, it was really interesting to me when they developed Viagra as a medication for pulmonary fibrosis. Yeah, yeah. Mm, and right. Viagra that, you know, like we, I'd have my, my patients in the hospital, silos. huge doses of Viagra, they, yeah. they call it a different name. I don't remember what, what yeah, the yeah, brand yeah. name is, but it was to improve cellular respiration yeah, and to improve right. oxygenation in pulmonary fibrosis. Yeah. And uh, I want you to go over that this soon because we know Viagra doesn't make nitric, uh, nitric oxide, but it's the same pathway, it's That's upstream right. from upstream upside. So if you can go over this Viagra, and let's talk also about sexual health and nitric oxide. Optimizing your health is only a scan away. Select the QR code that fits your profile best. And we look forward to hearing from you at the Medical Health Institute.